my side, my view, my, my middle ground kind of moderate viewpoint is not being represented yeah. to the rest of the world, I didn't feel. And rather than, you know, just banging it out on Twitter or Instagram every day, I thought, I've got to do something. I have benefited greatly from the American dream. And I feel like for the sake of my kids and because I so love this country, I've got to start giving back. My job had me looking up the meaning of American dream because I must have missed something. The term American dream was coined in 1931 from a book titled Epic of America by James Truslow Adams. James Truslow Adams described it as the dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement. And Michelle Tafoya knows that very well. She earned her way and with hard work, she was able to achieve being an excellent sportscaster and reporter for decades who is moving on to work as a co-chair of a gubernatorial candidate's campaign. More on this later. But this American dream, when it comes to what should be opportunity and equality for a job or employment, like maybe what Michelle Tafoya used to do, for instance, race does matter. How many experiments do we need to see where sociologists send out two sets of matching resumes featuring the same qualifications and credentials, with the exception being that half of them use white sounding names and the other half use black sounding names? This same process has also been repeated for apartment rental ads too. Either way, both the resumes with black sounding names and the black rental applications were less likely to get callbacks for interviews than those with white sounding names and less likely to be told that an apartment was available than those with white sounding names, respectively. Race was the cause of these disparities. These were real employers and real landlords who can't get past blackness in order to judge content of character. Let's get nerdy. There's a meta-analysis incorporating every field experiment on hiring since the first ones were carried out in the 1980s. Across two dozen studies, black applicants were called back 36% less than whites with the same qualifications. The rate of discrimination is the same today as it was in the 1980s. So when Michelle Tafoya says it breaks her heart that her kids are being taught that skin color matters, does she not want them to know the truth? She said on The View that one of her two kids, both are teenagers, used to be friends with an African-American boy, but they separated due to affinity groups based on race. Affinity groups? Could a teacher warn that African-American boy and tell the truth about the studies I just mentioned for him when he applies for a job? What if his name was Jamal? Oh, back to affinity groups. You know those things where people get together based on common interests like chess and Beyonce and yes, race. And white America has no problem when some racial or ethnic groups come together in the form of, say, Chinatowns and Mexican barrios, just as long as they can sample the local fare and appropriate culture. So is Michelle Tafoya suggesting that affinity groups in and of themselves are the reason why her child sees the African-American kid less? What would be the difference if he was in chess group, for example? Also, if the issue is that her child hasn't joined the Beyonce group, then that's cause enough for Jamal to talk to him less. Or is she simply implying that by joining this black group, Jamal feels like he should talk to white kids less? Don't forget, there's affinity groups for political ideology. Michelle Tafoya seems to have no problem with being on Tucker Carlson's show. Isn't that show an affinity group for not stating actual facts? I can only hope that what Michelle Tafoya wants to do now is tell employers that skin color doesn't matter, right? That's what she's going to do, right? So the Jamals of the world can be the next great sideline reporter without having to worry about how his name appears on resumes. If she's going to push this fake moderate position of hers, which lends itself to the right, she should just say that. It's okay. I mean, there's a reason why her first interviews after leaving NBC, one talking down Colin Kaepernick and the other with Tucker Carlson. She's campaigning for Kendall Qualls, who said, my life is a living case study that the American dream and the promise of America is alive and well, and I'm going to use it and I'll ram it down their throats. And if you have an issue with that flag or this country, if you believe it is evil or systemically racist, you have no greater enemy than me. This affinity group seems exclusive to ignoring data and the truth. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.